Hi there. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is Julie DiMatteo from thepaperpixie.com and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the U.S. And in today's video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this super cool magic sliding treat holder. Oh, how awesome is that? I love this and I cannot stop <laughs> making it do its magic thing. How awesome is that? I want to give credit to fellow German demonstrator Cornelia Janssen. She has a very similar project to this on her blog. I'll be sure to link that in my detailed blog post. I converted her metric measurements to inches and then I tweaked the size slightly because the Ghirardelli squares are a little bit wider when you count in the uh, wrapping. So I tweaked the measurements just slightly to make sure that we could fit a Ghirardelli square. Isn't that so cute? And I love the color combination with this. So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna start with a piece of Melon Mambo cardstock that measures seven and a half inches by two and three quarter inches. And we're gonna go ahead and score this along the seven and a half inch side at three eighths, three quarters, two and seven eighths, three and one quarter, and five and three eighths. Okay, then we're gonna fold and burnish on all the score lines. Here we are. So we have our two small sections here. So we've got this larger section here on the right. This is gonna be the panel that we're gonna be working on to put the little mechanism in for the slider. All right, so I'm gonna use the watermelon punch from the Itty Bitty Fruit Punch Pack because this just is a really great size and shape to put in a couple of notches here to put in our little sliding mechanism. So I'm just gonna go ahead and slide this into this panel and I'm just eyeballing it that this punch is centered from the score line here to the edge of the cardstock. It does not need to be perfect. And I don't know, I'm about an eighth of an inch in. So we'll punch that out and create a notch. And I'll repeat the same thing on the other side. There we go, now we've got two notches in that panel. Now you're gonna laugh at me, but I have got a quart Ziploc bag here. And what I did first was I just cut off the bottom so that we could get rid of that bottom seam. And I'm gonna bring in my Stampin' Trimmer and I'm actually gonna cut just a little half inch strip here off the bottom of this bag. And you'll be surprised the Stampin' Trimmer cuts this bag like butter. There we are, so now we've got a little half inch strip of plastic here. And you could really use any type of plastic bag, but I know that we all have Ziploc bags in our kitchen. I'm just gonna take a pair of paper snips and just cut off that seam on either side. And then we'll be left with two pieces of plastic. We just need one for this project, so save the other one for when you make more of these. And I promise you, once you make one, you won't be able to stop. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take the end of this plastic strip, and I'm gonna put a little piece of tear and tape adhesive. Again, you're not gonna be able to see this very easily on the video, but I'm putting this right at the end. So you'll see that there, it's at the end of that plastic. I'm gonna fold this down, all right? And I'm just gonna, by just holding it with my thumb here, I've got this right up to that little notch and I'm gonna wrap this down, bring it up from behind, basically just wrapping it around where those notches are, okay? So before I bring that around to the front, I'm just gonna peel off the tear and tape backing here. And again, we've got this right up to that notch. Then we're gonna pull this around and I'm pulling it tight, but not super tight, because we wanna make sure that it still has movement. And I'll press that down. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut off that excess plastic. All right. And now I'm gonna put one more piece of tear and tape just kind of right over where we had that other piece. And you wanna make sure that the tear and tape is not hanging over the edge of the plastic because we want this to be able to move freely. That's gonna be our little sliding mechanism. So again, we've got the tear and tape here at the top on this front side, then on the back side, we're gonna put tear and tape in the opposite 
but same position. So as you'll see, we have it here at the top, open it up, and it's at the bottom on this side, okay? So let me put this off to the side for a second. Now I've got two pieces of Melon Mambo cardstock here, one that measures two inches by two and five eighths. The second one measures two inches by three and one eighth. I'm gonna take that longer one and we're gonna punch out one of the ends from the scallop tag topper punch. Okay, that's gonna make it real easy for us to have a ribbon pull. Then I'm gonna go ahead and bring in, I've got one more piece of cardstock that I forgot to mention. We've got Whisper White and this measures one and seven eighths by two and a half. So we've got three pieces of cardstock here and I wanna make sure that I round all the corners of them. And this is just gonna give them a nicer finish. So I'm gonna use the envelope punch board, the reverse punch and round all the corners. And you'll notice on the scallop tag topper piece, we only had to round the two bottom corners because the top corners are already rounded from the scallop tag topper punch. So now I've got our three pieces rounded. Now I'm gonna do some stamping on this Whisper White piece. We're gonna use the You Move Me stamp set. It's a photopolymer, and we're gonna use the sentiment, thanks. I'm gonna stamp that in basic black ink onto Whisper White, and we're gonna do a trio of the word. I'm gonna start with the one in the center so that I can eyeball it and then stamp the top and the bottom. But the key here is I'm gonna stamp them off to the left side, because if you look here, you'll see that not the full panel comes out. So we wanna make sure our sentiment is off to the left so that we can see the full sentiment. Okay, now that stamping is done. We're gonna go ahead and hear this to the smaller non-scalloped tag topper piece. All right, now our pieces are ready to adhere to our sliding mechanism. So I want this piece, the scalloped piece, to go on the front of this folded over panel, okay? So we wanna make sure that this tear and tape is on the left side and your scallop topper is on the right side. So I'm just gonna go ahead and peel away the tear and tape backing. Then we're gonna go ahead and line up this panel. I'm kind of eyeballing it and centering it in the section there. It is slightly smaller, and then you're gonna press down. Okay, so now that's adhered. Now if we picture, if I dry fit this, this is gonna pull from the right, so we wanna make sure that this panel is gonna come out this direction, okay? So again, I just kind of eyeball it. So what that means, since this is closed, so we want it to come out this way, right? So we wanna make sure that that is how we adhere it. So face down like so, okay? I'm gonna pull away the tear and tape backing. And again, we've got it going this way. We're gonna center it in this section here. And press down. All right. Still not looking like it yet, but we're close. Now I'm gonna grab a piece of tear and tape and put that along this last little 3 eighths of an inch section at the top here. And again, we're on the outside of that. And what we want to do is we want this to adhere. Let's see if I can show you this way. We want it to go just behind the scalloped tag topper. Well, you can see that. So we're going just behind the scallop tag topper. Okay. So I'm going to pull off the backing here. Make sure that it's going to go behind the scallop tag topper. And it's easier if I kind of fold this flat here. So I'm folding this flat and that's just going to help me kind of line this up. and press into place so that box should still square up. All right, so what I forgot to do is put in the ribbon pull here. We can do that now. We're gonna use our silver metallic edge ribbon. I'm just gonna cut about a six inch piece here. 
All right, so we're gonna feed that through the back. This is a Vera Bradley ribbon pull here. So feed it through the back, wrap it around the front, bring it to the back, back through, and then up through that loop. And then I'll just pull that tight, okay? And we'll trim off the ends at an angle. Use my ribbon, my retired ribbon scissors here. All right, now, because this ribbon, and you know the recipient is gonna be playing with this over and over again, we don't want our ribbon ends to fray. So I'm just gonna take a lighter and heat seal the end of the ribbon so it doesn't fray. All right, so those are heat sealed. Now, let's just double check this is working. How cool is that? I love it. All right, so let's go ahead and put our chocolate in. Now I'm gonna use, this is a Ghirardelli square. I love this because it's the black wrapper. And I'm just gonna pick up two glue dots to stick. Just gonna pick those up right from the glue dot roll. All right, now the trick here is I'm gonna actually, we want it to come out like this. But what I wanna do is just slide it in there without it sticking down. So I'm gonna kind of put this upside down, trying not to stick those glue dots. Then I can slide that chocolate into place. And then I'm just gonna press down. So now it should be attached. How cool is that? Love it. All right, so let's decorate the front of this. So first I cut out a stitched shape circle from the stitch shape framelits. It's the second smallest circle out of Whisper White. I'm gonna go ahead and use some Fast Fuse and stick that to the front of our treat holder. All right, and then I cut out this beautiful black butterfly using the Move Me Thinlets, which coordinate very nicely and actually bundles with the You Move Me stamp set. You can get these bundled together at a 10% discount. So I use, these are two separate dies, so you can get a full panel butterfly or you can add this one to make it more intricate like this, which is just gorgeous. Then I'm just gonna grab some liquid glue on the back of this. You could use glue dots as well. And we'll stick that right to the center of that circle. Then for some added bling, we're gonna use the clear faceted gems. I'll pick up one of the medium sized ones with a paper piercer and I'll place that right in the center of the butterfly. And voila, we have a beautiful magic sliding treat holder. How awesome would that be to give to someone just for a little thank you. So many other great ideas you could make with this by just tweaking the measurements slightly. This would be great to hold a gift card. So instead of the chocolate, put a gift card on one side and your note on the other. You could also adapt this mechanism to make a sliding card. So I've seen a lot of really cool projects with this out on Pinterest, so go check them out. And again, I wanna thank Cornelia Janssen for the inspiration for this project. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel so you don't miss my next video. If you're in the US and you're interested in purchasing any of the Stampin' Up! products I use today, they'll be linked in the description. And I'll also include a link to my detailed blog posts with all project details and measurements. I'd love to have you come visit me at thepaperpixie.com where I post projects every weekday to inspire you. I have options to subscribe to both my newsletter and my daily blog updates and I'd love to welcome you as a new subscriber. If you're in the U.S., you can shop with me anytime at thepaperpixie.com shop. And if you're interested in joining my team of Paper Pixies, reach out to me if you have any questions, or you can go ahead and purchase your starter kit by going to thepaperpixie.com join. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed day. Take care. Bye.